All right. Well, hey, teammates, and thanks again for joining us here on the Airmen Helping Airmen podcast. I think you all know me, um, Kay Wright, the CEO of our Air Force Aid Society. So last episode, we had uh, representatives from the Army Emergency Relief and AFES uh, talking about the partnership that we have with AFES. And so I just want to thank them once again for us. This week, we have a really special treat uh, for you. We're going to be talking to the leadership from the three other charities within the Air Force Assistance Fund. So today I have the honor of introducing you to the leaders of those respective organizations. And the reason that we're talking about this now is because in starting March 1st, we'll, we will begin the Air Force Assistance Fund campaign. And we also have another special guest uh, that I'll introduce you to today. You'll hear about each of the charities and why your support uh, is needed and how it benefits the different uh, organizations within those those charities. So let me let you hear from them. First, I'll introduce the guest that we have with us today, beginning with the president and CEO of the Enlisted Village, Chief Master Sergeant Retired Brooke McLean. The Executive Director and Chief Operating Officer of the General Curtis E. LeMay Foundation, Ms. Liana Franklin. And the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Blue Skies of Texas, also known as the Air Force Villages Charitable Foundation, uh, Lieutenant General Retired Daryl Jones. And we also have with us the Chief of Air Force Fundraising from uh, your Air Force Personnel Center, Chief Master Sergeant Retired, William Diavanzo. And he's also known as, we, go, we know him as, as Bill. Okay, so I'm gonna go around and allow each of our guests to talk a little bit about their mission. And why don't we start with you, Brooke, and the Air Force Enlisted Village. Thanks, Chief. I appreciate the opportunity to be on the podcast. Uh, always good to see you and our other friends from the, the Air Force Charities. Uh, at the Air Force Enlisted Village, we primarily take care of widows or surviving spouses of retired Air Force Enlisted Airmen. Over the years, we have also included retired enlisted couples along the way, and we have expanded to where we now have opportunities for people to be able to come and live. And a, we are a, a traditional senior living community um, with independent living and assisted living. Um, but what we're not is we're not the Armed Forces Retirement Home. And a lot of people think that we are. So they think, ah, oh, I give you 50 cents every month. It comes out of my paycheck and it goes to the enlisted village. But it really doesn't. That goes to the Armed Forces Retirement Home. So uh, we uh, rely on donations from charitable airmen and other groups from across the Air Force to be able to support our mission. Um, and we're, we're very grateful for that support. Um, one of the things that we try to do is to try to make sure that we treat everybody with the utmost dignity and respect. And the way we do that is by using the mom rule. And so we ask ourselves about uh, interacting with our residents and would you do it to your mom? Would you do it for your mom? And would your mom approve? And of course, those guiding principles are the things that allow us to treat people the way that everybody should be treated. It really, it's the golden rule. So we're very grateful for that. We appreciate the opportunity to be here on the podcast with you today and look forward to hearing from the rest of the charities. Thanks, Chief. All right, thanks, Brooke, and thanks for the great work that you've been doing for so many years and the, the Air Force Enlisted Village has uh, done for so many years. Uh, next, we have uh, Ms. Liana Franklin from the LeMay Foundation. Hi, yes, our mission is to keep a spouse in her home where she spent with her husband and children during his active duty service and throughout his retirement. Uh, we provide monthly grants to these spouses to live day to day. Uh, we also assist with one-time grants uh, for medical and dental bills, hearing aids and dental needs, past due rent, mortgage payments, car repairs, um, minor home repairs, just to name a few. Um, but yeah, uh, like Brooke said, we, we do uh, appreciate um, donations. Um, it, you know, without them, we can't we can't do our mission. So we do thank you. And again, thank you for having us here on the, on the podcast. I appreciate it. Um, but thank you, Chief. 
All right. Thanks, Liana. And thank you uh, for all the great work that you guys do with the LeMay Foundation. And now we have Lieutenant General Retired Daryl Jones from the Blue Skies over Texas. Okay, right. Thank you very much. You know, Blue Skies of Texas started 50 years ago as Air Force Village, where General Curtis LeMay had the idea to take care of widowed spouses, and it soon became senior living. In 2013, we changed the name to Blue Skies of Texas, but we still have the Air Force Village's Village's Charitable Foundation to help take care of our family members. We're a full service continuing care retirement community, which means that we have residents in independent living, assisted living, skilled nursing, and memory care. And so when you come to us, we take care of all your needs. If you're not in the hospital, you're usually with us here at Blue Skies. And we care for airmen and their families throughout their entire life. And the the Air Force Village's Charitable Foundation allows us to support those families when for no reason of their own, they maybe outlive their resources or there's a tragedy in the family that stresses their finances because we turn no one away from Blue Skies of Texas once they move in with us. And we'll take care of their bills for the rest of their life if need be, because unfortunately something might happen that you outlive your resources and we don't want that to be a worry. And so this is another opportunity for airmen to take care of airmen. And in this case now airmen and guardians to take care of each other. And the Air Force Assistance Fund is such an important part of that program every year as it supports all four of our official charities and makes it makes it easy for us to care for other airmen and their families. All right. Thank you, General Jones. We definitely appreciate it. I've had an opportunity to visit uh, Blue Skies of Texas, as well as I spent a lot of time with Brooke uh, down at the Air Force Enlisted Village. And just uh, between the two of them and the LeMay Foundation, it's fascinating to see just the wonderful things that uh, each of our organizations do for airmen and their families. And of course, you all are familiar uh, with the Air Force Aid Society. We've been around for about uh, 79 uh, years. General Hap Arnold and his wife, B, uh, originally established uh, the Air Force Aid Society. And we've been chugging along ever since. We typically uh, provide emergency assistance, scholarships, and some community uh, programs. Uh, one of the more recent uh, updates for us has been we've integrated the Space Force professionals uh, into all of our, our programs. So The guardians of the Space Force um, are eligible for all of the same um, benefits that our airmen and their families are representative of. Um, So, again, uh, thank you. Hey, let's let's get in. uh, Before we get into the questions, uh, we do have one other guest that I mentioned today, uh, Bill D'Avanzo. And uh, Bill, tell us why you what your role is in all of this and the Air Force Assistance Fund. Yes, sir. Will do. And thank you for having us join you today, Khalid. Uh, Since 2008, I've I've had the honor of running the AFAF campaign for the Air Force. And every year I I get to coordinate and plan our campaign with with you four great leaders and and your brilliant directors of development. Uh, Then I get to work with 81 Air and Space Force locations around the world uh, to appoint, equip, and train uh, these volunteer installation project officers they, they work with over 3,600 other volunteers during the course of the annual spring campaign. One of our models for the FF campaign is for airmen and guardians by airmen and guardians. And that's really the best description of what we all around this virtual roundtable are doing. I might provide tools, guidance, and training to run the campaign at our 81 locations around the world. But it's really, it's the 162 installation project officers who concurrently continue their daily missions and run their campaign locally, who are making sure our fellow airmen and guardians know about the great work the 4FF charities do for the Air Force family. And they and their 3,600 volunteers tell the stories of our uh, four official charities of the Air Force. And our uh, Space Force professionals uh, our teammates, they, they generously respond every year. Okay, thanks, Bill. And we certainly couldn't do what we do without you and the support from the folks at AFBC. And I love that you mentioned uh, all of the representatives at the various bases who help run the FF campaign. So I just want to send a shout out to all those individuals who work so hard on behalf of all of us uh, to help raise funds for uh, the four different charities. Um, 
Let's begin with this this question. So we're often either confused with uh, CFC, the Combined Federal Campaign, or people think we are uh, the actual CFC. So uh, General Jones, can you kind of tell us the difference between CFC and FF? Sure. Hey, right. That's a great question because people have been confused for years. Ever since my first days as a lieutenant, I know we've answered this question many times. You know, the combined federal campaign came around in 1957, 10 years after the United States Air Force was founded as a way for federal employees and military to give to the larger community. The military didn't want federal employees and military members to be solicited all throughout the year. So they came up with this one concentrated point in time every year to go out and allow for solicitation. Well, they saw very quickly that that really didn't help inside the Air Force with the four charities that you see here. And they were sort of getting lost in the mix because the CFC supports a lot of things that are off base and a lot of focus that's not internal to the military. So in 1972 and 1973, they came up with the Air Force Assistance Fund Drive to allow us to focus just on the four charities of the Air Force, the four you see here today, the Air Force Aid Society, the Courtesy LeMay Foundation, the Air Force Enlisted Village, and the Air Force Village's Charitable Foundation to allow airmen to help airmen. And now, as Bill says, airmen and guardians to help each other. And so that's really how it came about. It's not the United Way campaign. It's not the combined federal campaign. It's the Air Force Assistance Fund campaign where you really get to help within the confines of your base to other airmen. And all of us contribute all throughout the year to airmen, their families, and their children who are in need. Yeah. Thanks, General Jones. So just remember, everyone, the CFC and AFA, even though they both uh, contribute uh, from they, they, we, they both allow you and all of us to help, you know, various charities. Uh, they are different. And the FF campaign uh, is limited to the four charities that we have here represented today. So thanks again, uh, General Jones. Uh, Liana, why don't you tell us about, we also get a lot of questions, and I'm sure Bill gets this question all the time, but uh, can civilians contribute to the FF campaign? Yes, civilians can donate with a cash check, money order, or online by visiting afassistancefund.org and learn the various ways that you can contribute. You can also text AFAF to 50155 to process your donation. All right, thanks Liana. And we appreciate all of the donations that we already received for civilians. So if you had any questions, if you're a civilian uh, on whether you can uh, donate, uh, you heard it right there from Liana. And we'll make sure that we put uh, in the comments the, um, the website and the various ways that you can contribute to if you're a, a civilian. All right, next question uh, for Brooke. Of course, it's tax season and people wanna know, uh, will my donation be considered as an IRS uh, taxable uh, contribution? Absolutely, yeah. So all of the charities, uh, your Air Force official charities are 501c3 organizations. And so we are registered with the IRS and you get tax credit for giving your donations in. And of course, depending on your situation, that can be very, very helpful to you. Uh, it's certainly helpful to us on the other side. So please uh, help us out and continue to donate and you do get tax credit. Thanks, Brooke. Uh, certainly, I think everybody, uh, we appreciate the, the donations and you also get to deduct it on your taxes. So uh, that is an overall good thing for all of us. Uh, Bill, what are the various ways that people can actually donate to the Air Force Assistance Fund? Well, uh, as Leanna was saying, uh, they can visit afassistancefund.org. Uh, and this is year round. You can go there year round, as well as texting uh, AFAF to the number 50155. Now with the current pandemic, we are limiting face-to-face -face interaction with installation and unit project officers, as well as our key workers this year. So to help our campaign workers to reach out to their peers and to provide our contributions with another, or our contributors with another uh, avenue to give, we will be launching a peer-to-peer -peer crowdfunding component to this year's campaign for each base. So you will receive the information at the base level about your base's campaign and how to donate via Facebook or the base campaign website link. 
Okay, thanks, Bill. And again, like I said, we'll put all of uh, that information in the comments. So anybody, ha if anybody has any questions about how they can donate, how they can contribute, uh, we'll make sure that you get all of that information. So, hey, we covered a lot of stuff, but I'm really interested from uh, from everyone on just in your own words and, and in your opinion, why should airmen, their families, civilians, you know, corporations, folks who aren't military, why should anybody give to the Air Force Assistance Fund. I'll hop on in here. Well, I tell you what, it, number one, you know, it, as uh, General Jones mentioned earlier, you know, this is uh, uh, Air Force uh, people, airmen and guardians taking care of our family members and reaching out to them and helping them along the way. I know at the Enlisted Village, it's been a very difficult year with the COVID pandemic. Uh, it has disproportionately affected older people. Uh, and so for our community, it's been a challenge to be able to protect those individuals. And so this year, we're going to need more donations than ever to come in to help us to offset the additional security, the additional cleaning and PPE that we've had to buy, and then also the additional transportation. Uh, we have set up different systems to be able to take care of our residents. Uh, and many of them, candidly, were very frightened at the beginning of the pandemic. And they're still worried. So we want to make sure that they're taken care of. We want them to know that this is the safest place that they can be. There's some people that are hesitant to move right now because of the fears of the pandemic. But what we find is that really people are safer here when they move in with us. We have just completed our second round of vaccinations here at the village. And so we've been able to help our residents both in terms of their health but also just their well-being, both with the social activities, the activities that we do physically, uh, and then also helping them in, in little ways, just like uh, providing personal shopper assistance. We had a great group of airmen from Herbert Field that helped us out and volunteered earlier this year and uh, would physically go over and get shopping lists and go shop for our residents and then would deliver it over so that our residents didn't have to leave. So uh, it, it's, it's um, a wonderful thing to see airmen of all generations help out and providing that assistance to our community and to all the charities. Thanks, bro. Okay, Joe Jones, we were talking about uh, why you think anyone should give uh, to Air Force Assistance Fund. What a great question. And, you know, I think the reason I gave to the Air Force Assistance Fund for so many years was from the minute you came in the Air Force, whether you're an officer, enlisted, or a civilian, we were all airmen and now we're all airmen and guardians, but you knew that you were part of something bigger than yourself. And you knew that you wanted to take care of your new family and your family members, whether you were helping out the family of someone who was deployed overseas during the war or a family whose child was sick or, or at birth had problems, everybody was willing to pitch in. The Air Force Assistance Fund is a chance for you to pitch in on a grand scale. It's not just bringing over a meal to someone's house when someone's sick. It's helping airmen with the daily necessities of life and their families. You know, I, I was in the Air Force for 34 years. I saw people who donated their life to the service and it impacted where they lived. It impacted how they, the jobs they took later in life and it impacted their family. Those family members were every bit the airmen as much as we were, the ones that deployed. And now, as in our case, as they get older and move into a senior living at Blue Skies of Texas and we take care of them, we were really proud that we were able to broaden our horizons. In 2013, we opened Blue Skies of Texas up to all ranks, all services, and it's formed this great mosaic, mainly of airmen who come together to really celebrate the commonality of sacrifice and service. Everyone who's part of the Air Force Assistance Fund, whether you're in one of our four charities or whether you're donating, knows that you're part of something bigger than yourself. And this is our chance to take care of people who, by no fault of their own, need help. And it's our chance to come to assistance because one day we're going to be there and we want to know that someone came to our assistance when we needed help. All right. Thank you so much, uh, General Jones. Uh, Liana, anything to add? Uh, yes, um, I'm going to kind of piggyback off of Brooke and Daryl, but um, you provide a, a future for our spouses, our widows, and eventually in the future, we might have widowers. So you provide a future for them to specifically for our foundation, keep them in their home or um, for uh, Blue Skies or um, the Enlisted Village, um, keep them or provide a home for them. So um you provide a future 
for all of them. Yeah. Wow. I like that. You provide a future for all of them. That might be our next tagline. You provide a future. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Bill, uh, why should people give to Air Force Assistance Fund? Well, that's that's the key question, isn't it? Look, there there are plenty of worthy charities to give to. Uh, we, we all can agree with that. But the reason it's so important to give to the FF campaign is the basic pay it forward uh, principle. We may be able to give to the campaign today to, to help our fellow airmen and guardians, but we never know when the day may come when we ourselves are making that call for assistance. Uh, just like General Jones said, uh, one of our charities might be there to help us when we need when we need the help. So you all can't continue to do what you do for the Air Force family without the support of the great Air Force family. And I'd, I'd really like to take this opportunity to say that for over 24 years on active duty, I assumed nearly everyone in the Air Force was giving every year. It, it wasn't until I started uh, running the campaign that I learned active duty participation was between 23 and 30 percent in the decade between 2000 and 2010. Unfortunately, since 2013, we've seen active duty participation drop by two or three percentage points per year, so that in 2018, less than one in 10 airmen were giving to the campaign. In 2020, uh, when we had to run a virtual campaign for the first time, uh, rather than going desk to desk due to the pandemic, the combination of uncertainty brought on by COVID-19 and not being able to tell the stories of our four charities face to face resulted in our participation rate dropping all the way down to 2.4% or 7% of the active force. So the bottom line really is uh, that we need each other. And, and I hope that this year sees a turnaround in this troubling trend. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Hey, we dropped down to two point. 4% or whatever that percentage is. But I tell you what, I, I'm very hopeful. I don't know about you guys, but I'm hopeful that in the coming years, the participa participation rate will go back up. And I think one of the key things that we've all talked about is, you know, as as we improve the technology and find more and better ways for to for people to give, I think that participation rate uh, will continue to grow. And as we do think more things like this and we get the word out to our active duty airmen, um, airmen, civilians, family members, you know, retirees and, and folks all across the globe uh, about the importance of the Air Force Assistance Fund. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling confident that we'll get those numbers up because the more money we raise, I mean, let's face it, the more people we can help. And that's what we're all here to do. I could not agree with you guys more about why people should give to Air Force Assistance Fund. I had the pleasure, like uh, at least uh, uh, Brooke and, and Bill and, and, and uh, General Jones of uh, serving this great nation and watching uh, our airmen and their family members make the sacrifices. And I don't just mean the people who went to Afghanistan and Iraq and Desert Shield and Desert Storm or, or Vietnam, but all of our service members and their families make sacrifices at, at some level. And it's just great uh, to have organizations like ours that can that can help them out. So we've covered quite a bit today. Uh, let me just recap and then I'll give everybody an opportunity uh, to give some closing comments. Uh, so first and foremost, mark your calendars. The Air Force Assistance Fund uh, drive begins, the campaign begins on one March. We need your help. Uh, so uh, there are several ways to give. So let me reiterate, you can uh, uh, visit the website, airforceafassistancefund.org. You can text AFAF to 50155. That's text AFAF to 50155 and we'll process your donation or you can donate through your basis peer-to-peer -peer campaign and I'm certain that someone from your base will be reaching out to you most likely virtually during the, the campaign uh, if, if you wanted to provide a payroll deduction. If you're old school and you want to mail in your check or cashier's check, first of all, don't mail cash, but if you want to mail in your contribution, uh, send it here at the address that you see below. All right, we're counting on each and every one of you uh, to help this to help make this another successful year for 
Air Force Assistance Fund campaign. Um, so again, thank you guys for joining us. But before we go, let me say thank you uh, to Liana from the LeMay Foundation, uh, General Jones from Blue Skies of Texas, Brooke from the Air Force Enlisted Village, and Bill from Air Force Personnel Center. And with that, I'd like to give each of our guests uh, just uh, a couple of minutes to make some final remarks. We'll start this time with General Jones from Blue Skies. Chief, thank you very, very much. You know, I think it's pretty simple. We all exist to take care of our airmen and our guardians and their families. But we all exist because airmen and the guardians take care of the family they're in today and they donate to help people in the future. And that's what makes the Air Force and the Space Force so great and always has been why we're the strongest service of all the military services and we support each other better than anyone else. Thanks, Chief. All right, thanks for joining us. Bill. Yes, Chief, uh, th thank you for bringing us, you know, the team together today. Uh, I, I just want to repeat, our, our campaign may be starting officially in March, uh, but you can donate from the afassistancefund.org website or text AFAF to the number 50155 at any time of the year to give to these four great official charities of the Air and Space Force. So let's pay it forward, team. All right, thanks, Bill, and thanks for that great reminder. Liana. Yes, thank you again for watching, and again, thank you for your time. Um, you've all been a big part of all of our organizations, and we cannot continue this without you, so thank you. All right, thanks, thanks, Liana. And Brooke, close us out. You bet. So they always say, don't bring up something new in your summary. But, you know, we haven't talked about the um, uh, the folks at the BX and the shop at helping through their uh, option to pay at the, the, the register and to make a donation. I think that's a great program. I know I end up giving five bucks every time I go in and I, I don't even think about it. So that's another great thing that APHES has helped us to be able to do. So uh, it, every dollar matters. I know for our charity and the other charities, that money that comes in is fenced, it's protected, and it goes to help airmen and guardians specifically for the missions that we represent. So that it, every dollar, every penny that comes in comes back to our families. So thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, Chief Wright, thank you, as always, for your leadership and helping us out. And I hope everybody contributes this year, and we look forward to reporting back some great results here in the near future. Yeah. Hey, thanks, thanks, Brooke, for that great reminder. As I mentioned at the beginning of this show, we had the AFES uh, leadership and the Army Emergency Relief leadership on the last show. But it's, I think that that is a great point worth uh, reminding everyone of just another way that they can give is through AFES. Uh, once again, let me thank uh, each of our guests, as well as our producer, Desmond Ferris, and all of the people who uh, did all of the work behind the scenes for this podcast, Airmen Helping Airmen. Um, and we need to figure out how we add our guardians in there. So let's just say for now, Airmen and Guardians Helping Airmen and Guardians. Uh, but we really appreciate your support. We really appreciate you tuning in. We'll make sure that we have you have all the information that you need to contribute to the Air Force Assistance Fund. And once again, thank you for the incredible support that you provide to each of our four organizations. And I look forward to a continued partnership uh, with all my colleagues here today. So thank you guys once again and have a wonderful Air and Space Force Day. 